Caleb Hammer might sue me for this video, and that isn't clickbait at all. He's already threatened legal action against me multiple times before I even released this video, simply for looking into a story he doesn't want covered and not immediately accepting his point of view. Now, to me, that seems very suspicious and almost like Caleb didn't want me to find something. And spoiler alert, yes, I found some very interesting pieces of information we'll be discussing later in the video. Now, a few weeks ago, I was presented with some information that Caleb Hammer, a finance YouTuber with 1 million subscribers, had allegedly acted inappropriately with a guest on his show. I reached out to Caleb by email to get his side of the story, as these allegations were pretty severe, and I had no interest in making a video without getting everyone's side of the story. Caleb initially was very friendly over email and denied all the claims against him, and even told me to have a great day. What a nice young man. Unfortunately, that attitude quickly changed when I didn't immediately accept what he had to say as fact. He told me he wasn't interested in doing a Zoom call because he wasn't interested in participating in the internet drama industry, which I found to be quite funny since, in my opinion, his channel is entirely based on drama around other people's finances. He then made his first of many legal threats, stating that, in preparation for your video, we will be ready for legal repercussions for defamatory statements with very clear evidence proving our case. Now, keep in mind that this was after I had sent him only two emails and was just trying to get the details around the initial case of inappropriate behavior I was first aware of. Threatening legal action so quickly in the initial fact-gathering stage without any video being made yet really set off my alarms that something odd was going on here. Why was Caleb so defensive about me looking into this case further? If the initial person who came forward was so obviously a liar, why quickly jump to legal threats against someone who was trying to tell a story that would present all sides equally? Caleb claimed that his lawyer had gathered all videos and text that clearly show his first accuser, Zeke, is lying and made the statement that they had prepared to release these. I asked in the follow-up email if I could see any of the evidence they'd gathered, including videos Zeke supposedly deleted, and even told Caleb directly that if he can prove to me Zeke is lying, I wouldn't make any video on this topic and would move on. Caleb responded upset for some reason that I asked for the evidence that two emails before he had said he was prepared to release. I don't understand why Caleb would get mad at me for asking to see the evidence he already stated he gathered and was prepared to release. To me, that seemed like a fairly basic request, and as I stated to Caleb before, if the evidence was as strong as he suggested, I would have never made a video covering any of this. Following all this, Caleb decided to publicly post to his community tab and Twitter a long post claiming I was just a drama YouTuber and questioning my integrity. He then happily responded to one post on Twitter saying, I'm excited. I've never sued anyone before. This will be fun. Lawsuits are never fun, Caleb. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, you'll be devoting countless hours to fighting the case, and eventually the discovery process will take place where lawyers dig through every document they can get their hands on and uncover every and any secret currently hidden. I've also spoken to lawyers about this case, and you clearly would be classified as a public figure. If you sued me for defamation, you would have to prove actual malice that I knew information presented in the video was false and posted it anyway. Seeing as how I've given you multiple attempts to talk to me about the issue discussed in the video, as well as do everything in my power to verify it's accurate, I think that would be a very hard case for you to win. In my opinion, any lawsuit you file would just be a sad attempt to try and get revenge for not portraying you in the positive light you want everyone to see you in. Your sudden legal threats for simply asking questions will also portray you in a negative light if you do end up suing me, and any lawsuit you file will simply be a waste of time but that's just my opinion and Caleb can do whatever he feels needs to be done going forward. Now that we've got past all of Caleb's legal threats, let's get into the actual allegations against Caleb. First, we'll be talking about the original accuser of Caleb named Zeke, and then we'll talk about the further alleged text of Caleb I was given after. What many people don't know is that many of the early guests on Caleb Hammer's show were actually paid actors hired off of a website known as Backstage to appear on the show. Zeke was one of the actors that claims to have found out about Caleb's show from the site, and from the listing Zeke showed me, the offer was quite generous, with an initial small $25 appearance fee, and then a 25% commission on all revenue generated from the episode for 12 months. Anticipated commission was believed to range from $2,500 to $8,000, depending on video performance. Zeke, only 19 at the time, jumped at the chance to make to him what seemed like a large sum of money. Many people who have seen Zeke's episode have called him an insufferable brat and way worse things, but don't seem to understand that the attitude portrayed by Zeke isn't true to his normal personality from what I've seen talking to him, and it was designed to get as many views as possible to increase his chance of making more money and getting more screen time. 
This tactic ended up working and Zeke appeared two more times on the Caleb Hammer show, racking up a total of over 1 million views across the three episodes he appeared. Those view totals should have netted him a large sum of money if the commission payments seen in the job offer were paid. However, Zeke's claim to have only received a couple hundred dollars in total for his time on the show. Caleb no longer offers commission payouts on his newer postings for actors on his show, and since he won't talk to me and threaten to sue me, I can't give his side of the story if the commission offer to Zeke was real or if those payments were ever made, so for now, Caleb's side of the story on that will have to remain a mystery. There is an old posting I have linked below that shows that commission offer, but I've never heard of any of the actors who appeared on the show receiving that amount. If you were one of the actors who did get those payments, I would love to hear from you, and my email is linked below. While the issue of the alleged missing payments is important, the bigger issue came up in July of 2022 after Zeke's first appearance on the show when Caleb ended up leaving a very disturbing audio message on Zeke's phone. I can tell you're a cool dude and I want to like, if there's anything, any connections that I have, which I've built a lot of connections in Austin, anything that I'm able to kind of link you to, you know, I definitely want to be helpful. The main reason I haven't wanted to have this conversation via text is... Sorry, I had to burp. Um, one, I'm not used to OnlyFans. <laughs> Straight up. Uh, it's not really my scene. Uh, you know, I'm a personal finance dude. I don't really know anything about that. Uh, two, I'm straight. I'm like 90% straight. I've definitely fooled around because I'm open-minded. Um, and, you know, when you get drunk, whatever. But, you know, so, and this is like a, you know, a man-on-man -man thing. Uh, but essentially, I think... Well, from the conversation I had with him, the pay will be dependent on what you're willing to do and what you're willing to do is set by you. So what he would like to do, you guys make out. He would like to do that. What he, you guys, what he would like you guys to do, him fill you up. He would like to do that. You can say no about any of these. He would like to play with your dick and see that that's why I didn't want to type this out either because that's like weird for me to say. I don't, you know, it's not like we're friends or anything, but... That's what he wants to do. He wants to uh, give you a blowjob. Uh, and, oh, I was also told and confirmed with him that your face would be hidden, uh, blurred out and hidden. Your identity would be hidden. Um, um, and then if you wanted to give a blowjob, you could. Again, you would make more from that. And, uh, you know, he would eat your butt. <laughs> and you would make more for that. You can say no as well. Uh, uh, you know, you could top him, he could top you, whatever you're willing to do comes with more money, but you could literally do nothing. You could literally just lay back and let him just touch you for the video. And I guess for some reason, his subscribers love that and you'd get paid for it. So really that's what it is. And you know, I, there's things that I think I don't feel comfortable talking about in this kind of situation. And I'd be happier to talk over in person. Um, maybe I'm just that kind of person. Uh, so you just let me know what you think. When that audio message was first leaked, a lot of people claimed it was fake, and in 2024, with advancement in AI voice cloning technology, I understand why some people believed that. However, despite that, Caleb has confirmed on his Reddit, as well as in emails to me, that the voicemail you heard is 100% him, and he makes no claim to it being altered in any way. What is disputed about that voice message is why it was left, with Caleb and Zeke having very different stories. Zeke talked about doing OnlyFans modeling on his first appearance on the show and wanted help to grow on Twitch and OnlyFans from Caleb. Caleb's version of events was that he was simply trying to help Zeke out by connecting him with another guy to hook up with and make money from adult content on OnlyFans. After talking to Zeke, he made it clear to me that he only ever wanted to fuck bitches and get money. Talking to him further, I asked him why Caleb seemed so interested in trying to hook him up with a guy on OnlyFans and asked Zeke if he led Caleb on into thinking he was interested in doing adult content with other men, which he quickly denied. Zeke said that the reason Caleb kept pushing the gay OnlyFans content when Zeke only wanted to work with women was because Zeke believed this was an attempt by Caleb to hook up with him instead. Interestingly enough, the only piece of evidence Caleb sent me to support his claim actually supports Zeke's claim that he never wanted to do hardcore content or ever brings up doing content with men, saying he was only interested in softcore, lewds, and solo work. I'm not sure why Caleb sent this as evidence to support his claim, as it makes it clear Zeke wasn't interested in the hardcore content Caleb went into detail about in the voicemail, so I'm really confused as to why Caleb sent me this.
Whoever's version of events you choose to believe, I think it's safe to say that the audio message Caleb left was creepy and inappropriate. Caleb runs a finance YouTube channel and many people call him the millennial Dave Ramsey. If Dave ever had someone call into the show and then ask them if they wanted to give a BJ on OnlyFans to help pay down some of their credit card debt, I'm pretty sure he would lose a large chunk of his audience for saying something like that. Caleb claims he was just trying to help Zeke out, and if that was the case, there was clearly a better option to do that. Option one would have been to not talk about OnlyFans at all, since mixing finance content and sex work is probably not the best idea. Option two would have been to leave a simple message for Zeke, telling him he had an OnlyFans friend who might want to work with him, and then simply give Zeke's contact info to the friend so the two of them could work something out. Option three, the nuclear choice that Caleb picked, comes across incredibly creepy, unprofessional, and in my opinion, gives some belief to some of Zeke's claims because of how detailed the voice message was, along with Caleb's self-reveal that he is only 90% straight, and his follow-up text of telling Zeke he would needed to vet him in person before connecting him with his only fan friend. This comment doesn't make any sense to me since Caleb and Zeke had already shot an episode of Financial Audit together, so I don't understand what sort of vetting process Caleb had in mind. This wasn't Caleb's first attempt at offering OnlyFans to people who appeared on his show. On Caleb's subreddit early on in his YouTube career, he made a post explaining he had offered OnlyFans work unsolicited to several of the actors who appeared on his show and wanted to ask his audience if they felt this was appropriate. After his audience overwhelmingly made it clear they felt this was not appropriate and questioned why he was doing this, Caleb quickly deleted the post. Unfortunately, Zeke's claims against Caleb don't end there, as Zeke has also made the claim that Caleb inappropriately touched him after the filming of their second episode together. Yeah, you're claiming he actually touched you inappropriately as well? Yeah, he did. He locked me in his house after the second filming um, when his friend who helps him film, he left. I was locked in his house and he sat me down on his couch in the living room and he was trying... Like, the reason why I was on those shows so many times is because I was looking for opportunity and he kept promising opportunity aside from the only fan stuff but he was really trying to lure me in with that he was breadcrumbing me and so the second time we filmed he i was on the couch and he would not let me leave he would not pay me um what i was owed for that filming and essentially he didn't give me the money until he gro groped me and I needed that money to go home to because he knew all my personal finances. He knew how much money I had. I had no money when I showed up. I had zero money because I had spent it on gas to get to Austin. He knew that. Okay. How much did he uh, did he claim he was going to be giving you? Thousands. And how much the did you? The contract was thousands of dollars, and he only paid me less than two hundred dollars for 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 filming. While Caleb has never denied the voicemail is real, he has always claimed that the other accusations Zeke has made against him are completely false. Caleb has claimed that Zeke threatened his life and doxed him, and this is just a disgruntled former actor on the show, unhappy that he didn't want to bring Zeke back for more episodes. When I asked Zeke about that, I was actually shocked that he openly admitted to me that he had threatened Caleb's life. You're not lying? You didn't threaten to kill him? Of course I did. He, he, he molested me. Okay, okay. so wait, but you but are confirming that, that you said that? that. Yeah, um... He, he, him calling me a liar is him lying, but I mean, of course I threatened to kill him, but it wasn't really like, um, I'm going to do it. It was more like, be scared. Now I have to say that Zeke's behavior of threatening Caleb's life, doxing him, and his somewhat unhinged ramblings on social media have made a lot of people question his motives and unwilling to trust his story about the things he claims Caleb did to him. If he had never acted in that way, I think a lot more people would be willing to give the benefit of the doubt to him. Now, in my own personal opinion, I've actually been in a relationship with a woman who had been assaulted in the past, and the anger and violent outburst were something that I experienced firsthand. So while other people may quickly write Zeke off as a schizo liar, I don't think it's fair to immediately claim everything he says is fake just because he's acted inappropriately on how he handled this. We can talk about it if you want. I'm just saying, it's very clear to me that this Zeke guy is full of shit based on all the stuff that we're seeing here. <laughs> That's all I have to say, dude. Zeke's story has been talked about by a few channels now, and if it were just Zeke's claims about Caleb, I probably wouldn't cover this story, since Zeke's claims have already been told several times before, and unfortunately for him, his Pax actions make him look untrustworthy in the eyes of many who see him. I ended up talking to a few friends and several other YouTube creators as well, and one thing that was brought up was that if there was any truth to Zeke's story, Caleb has probably acted inappropriately in the past as well. 
someone who would so brazenly do what Zeke claims he did would have other skeletons in his closet. It didn't take long for another source to come forward, and I was contacted on Twitter by a former friend of Caleb who had known him for years. He went into detail about their history, and while I have to keep most of his initial message private so as not to dox him, his final paragraph paints Caleb in a very bad light. I share all of this with you to say that everything I know about Caleb, based on years of experience at communication with him, tells me that any of these allegations made against him are true. He believes wholeheartedly in his superiority to other people, which is why I believe he enjoys telling people about how wrong they are and need to do everything different with their finances. I think he gets off on feeling smarter and better than other people, and because of his frequent and unwanted sexual comments, I am not surprised in the least that someone has reported that he has made unwanted advances and slash or similar. He's a narcissist through and through, and he thinks his supposed intellectual and moral superiority make him immune to consequences or mistakes. This source wants to remain anonymous due to the constant death threat Zeke and others have received from Caleb's fans, but I have verified that he did indeed know Caleb for several years, and if Caleb were to claim this was a lie, I have plenty of evidence the two of them know each other and would be able to prove this source isn't made up if Caleb were to ever claim this source isn't really who he says he is. The source ended up sending me dozens of chat messages he claims are of Caleb, and if true, show a consistent pattern of unwanted sexual comments towards others in the group, as well as further sexually themed comments about a 16-year-old boy. I was truly shocked at just how much was uncovered. At the time of filming this video, even more is still being found. I've done everything in my power to confirm these messages are real, including sending one that has the sexually themed message about a 16-year-old boy to Caleb to ask if he wanted to deny if it was real. Caleb's response was that it was very out of context, but never denied it wasn't from him. Caleb's lawyer reached out to me after that email and asked that I not share what was in her email, so I'll honor that request and keep that conversation private. Now, before we take a look at the chat messages, I have to give some context as to where these actually came from, and to do that, we have to talk about Caleb's past. Now, despite Caleb having a channel about financial audits, he actually has no business degree and instead studied music composition at Western Michigan University, where he graduated in 2018. Following that, he began composing music and even created a YouTube channel that followed his musical endeavors as well. It was around this time that Caleb ended up joining a group known as the Millennium Composers Initiative. This group was created to bring young composers from around the world together so they could share ideas and foster growth for each other's musical careers. Caleb is still in this group to this day, and you can find his picture on their Instagram page and website. However, he no longer seems to be an active member since his finance YouTube channel took off. This group eventually started a Facebook group chat for its members to talk about their musical careers, as well as other topics, and it's from this chat that the alleged texts from Caleb come from. The source of the text, who asked me to conceal his identity, explains to what extent he believed the group was for. We felt, or at least I got the impression that we had very clearly agreed that it was uh, it was a professional chat uh, and that we had uh, professional friendships and that we were approaching it in that way. We, we did not um, we did not really uh, touch on topics uh, like that very much. The topics that he felt were inappropriate are what we're going to be focusing on. The first one that made several people uncomfortable was Caleb's comments about finding a 16-year-old boy hot. Now, in this chat group, everyone has nicknames instead of their actual name being used. I was told that Caleb picked many of these nicknames, but a few were picked by other members. Caleb was allegedly known as Super Ho Diddly Ho. So the user known as has sex all the time says, what's this hit beat you got playing? Super Ho responds with smoking is gross. Uncut responds with, so is saying that 15-year-old boys are hot. Dancing says, oh damn. Super Ho responds with, 16. Uncut says, doesn't make your case any better. Super Ho responds with, haha, thinking from a picture is cute isn't bad. I don't think the person was cut because they are young. He had facial hair, like, come on. Uncut says, why screenshot? Because Super Ho had taken a picture of this guy's Snapchat of his 16-year-old friend. And Super Ho says, he hot, is gay, please? Uncut says, he's 16 and no, effin' perv. Superho responds with shame. Uncut says, what was the age of consent in Michigan? Superho says 16. Uncut says, Texas is 17. And Superho says, shame. This is the message I sent to Caleb to confirm if they were real, which is when he replied that they were very out of context. I asked the informant if there was more context to this story, which he replied that there wasn't. Give a little bit more context. I, I reached out to Caleb for comment on this. 
He said this was taken very out of context, didn't give me any other info around that. So just anything you know around this this particular incident? Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> Uh, it's interesting that he'd say that, uh, particularly because I'm I'm not sure there's there's any more context uh, out of which it could be taken. Um, that is the extent of of the context surrounding this was that the the friend uh, with the nickname Uncut posted this this picture of his friend who was 16 years old uh, was posting uh, him as as a part of um, posting. He he posted the photo to congratulate him uh, and and to express gratitude for him, um, and uh, and and that's I mean that's it that's the context and then Caleb saw his story on Snapchat and and took that screenshot and it was at that point that uh, Uncut questioned it and and the rest of it takes place here in this group chat there's there's no other context out of which it could have been taken. Now, I do have to say, since Caleb has threatened to sue me, that 16-year-olds are actually at the legal age of consent in some states, including Caleb's home state of Michigan, so maybe he doesn't think anything is wrong with saying a 16-year-old boy is hot. Despite that, it seems a lot of people, myself included, think that it's inappropriate for a then 23-year-old Caleb to say things like that. It made members of the group uncomfortable, and just last year, the influencer known as Just Pearly Things made a similar tweet saying 16-year-olds are hotter than 26-year-olds. For a brief moment in time, both people on the left and right came together and made it very clear they felt that was an inappropriate comment, which eventually led to that influencer removing that tweet. There have been a number of Caleb supporters who have been defending him this entire time, and I would love to hear in the comments below if the Caleb fans are supporters of grown men saying 16-year-old boys are hot, or if you think adults shouldn't be commenting on the hotness of kids. Now, that wasn't the only time Super Ho made comments about teenage boys. In another post, it made it clear that Super Ho has no qualms about his desire for those young teenage boys. So in these chat messages, Super Ho posts a picture of another member's Instagram page that shows a young boy, and he asks who's the guy's name is, and the other guy gives him his name, which I blocked out, and then Uncut says, Caleb's boy crush, and Super Ho responds with, I would like to personally stick my penis in a hole of his. Any hole will do, thank you. Uncut responds with, gross, and Super Ho responds with, hot, let me. Uncut responds with, dude, he's like 14. Super Ho responds with, nah, probably around the other MCI member's age, if they were, if they were there with him. Later, Super Ho says, and if fuck, 17, it's legal there, it is here. Uncut responds with, Caleb, you're 23, that's gross. Super Ho says, not really, what I'm 50 and I find a sexy 21 year old, I could be a sugar daddy, I will do it, or her sugar daddy. Has sex all the time, responds with a uh, confused or upset meme. And then Super Ho says, both my grandparent sets are 10 years apart, six years is nothing. I would shove that cock right down his throat where it belongs. Uncut responds with, it's something if they're underage. Superho says, anything under 16 is. Believe it or not, 17 is not under 16. Has sex all the time, responds with another meme. Uncut then says, still not an adult. Superho says, I fucked too many people when I was not an adult. Uncut says, just trying to save you from trouble. Superho says, if something is not against the law, there would be no trouble. Uncut responds with, I mean, you do you and do those boys. And Super Ho responds with, I do. As you can see from those texts, the other members of the group clearly did not agree with Super Ho's openly sharing his desire for teenage boys. Now, to make it clear, I don't care what Caleb Hammer's orientation is. Many members of the MCI group, including the informant who gave me these texts, identify as members of the LGBTQ community. The issue here, if this really is Caleb, is his alleged interest in young teenage boys and his continued attempt to openly express this in the MCI group chat that was not intended to host this type of conversation. The informant who gave me these texts told me this type of continued behavior made himself and others very uncomfortable. On another occasion, Super Ho decided it would be a bright idea to post a screenshot of an adult video of two men having anal in the chat. This pissed off everyone in the group, and few of the younger members of the group were quickly removed from the chat before they saw the image so they wouldn't have to be subjected to it. So in these chats right here, you can see several members are talking about different adult stars that they like. Super Ho talks about how Kyler Moss used to be his favorite adult star. I wish he didn't stop. He stopped a few years back. Now my favorite is Joey Mills. So these texts go on for a while until Uncut eventually says, it's all fun and games until Caleb posted a picture of Joey Mills getting effed. And then a few minutes later, 
uh, Super Ho actually posts an uncensored picture of Joey Mills and another guy, to which he responds, ha ha, changed it on you, it's Joey Mills topping. And then you can see pretty much everyone in the group is extremely ticked off that he decided to post this because it was clearly just a, a joke and then he decided it would be hilarious to post uncensored adult content in this chat. And you can see several people asking him to remove it and they removed other people in the group so they wouldn't be subjected to actually seeing this image. And Caleb doesn't really seem, or Super Ho, doesn't really seem like it's a big deal to him. Now, aside from Super Ho's love of teenage boys and posting inappropriate unwanted adult content, he also dabbled in the occasional slurs from time to time. On one occasion, he decided to rename everyone in the group to R-Word, including himself, and then to add a cherry on top, decided to rename R-Word 5 to R-Word 5 Mexican. When I spoke to the informant about these texts, he made it clear that he felt Caleb seemed to be a very callous and disrespectful individual, and he seemed to take pleasure in making other members of the group uncomfortable. Those texts you saw were from 2018, but when Caleb allegedly rejoined the group just a couple of years ago, the informant claimed his behavior hadn't changed at all. Uh, those interactions that I had with Caleb were, were my earlier interactions with him back in 2018. Um, throughout the extent of time that we were in those series of sort of uh, friendly but professionally minded uh, group chats, um, Caleb was uh, consistently a, a source of argument, of, um, of disrespect, of flippancy, um, and was uh, always... Um, was always acting um, with in a just in, a, in in what I found to be a very uh, callous manner. Uh, become very noticeable to me that Caleb was um, was very consistent about making things uncomfortable uh, and uh, expressed that he took pleasure in in sort of initiating those uncomfortable situations. Um, there was a period of a, a few years in which I did not speak to him and which in which he was not part of those uh, um, group chats. He returned to our primary composer group chat in, um, I believe it was 2023. Um, and it was as if nothing had changed uh, at that time. So um, he continued to make sexual references when they were completely unprompted or unwarranted. He uh, would initiate arguments. He would not accept differing opinions. Uh, he would he would repeatedly insist on arguing his point, um, no matter how much anybody else would try to resolve an argument by agreeing to disagree. Um, and so, just from from the first time I've known him throughout many many years, he has always been uh, somebody who is uh, is is interested in generating conflict, uh, is interested in um, making people uncomfortable, and who is, uh, who is I, I think, I get the impression and have the opinion that, uh, that he is um, a, a narcissistic individual who, um, who thrives off of the negative emotions he elicits in others. Okay. Uh, so just to follow up, um, I'm I'm sure you've seen his YouTube channel. So you feel that that kind of narcissistic personality that's kind of portrayed on his YouTube channel is is somewhat true to his actual real personality. I would say it's incredibly true to his real personality. Knowing what we know now, Super Ho clearly is attracted by young teenage boys. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also has a similar skin tone to the picture from the chat messages. While Zeke's actions have made him unbelievable to many people, I'm curious if this changes your opinion on if Zeke is telling the truth about his alleged encounter with Caleb Hammer. Now, before I end the video, I want to talk about one more thing. Caleb's content, in my opinion, has devolved from actually trying to help people financially to nothing more than trying to mock people for their terrible financial habits. He brings people on, yells at them, tells them they're stupid for buying Starbucks coffee, and even goes so far as to openly insult them in the titles and thumbnails to make them seem as pathetic as possible. In a recent video, he even decided to make the Asian guy in the thumbnail look as inappropriate as possible, all in the hopes of getting as many views as he can to rack up that ad revenue. 
This thumbnail apparently went too far, and his own audience called him out in the YouTube comments and on his own subreddit, to which Caleb then decided to take a break from Reddit and pinned a comment on the YouTube video trying to push back against the well-deserved backlash for portraying an Asian man in such an inappropriate way. Now, Caleb has claimed on many occasions that guests on the show get a say on the thumbnail design and titles of their videos, and that he would never create those over-the-top designs unless the guest was okay with it. But after speaking to a former guest of the show, Gia, she said something entirely different. Caleb put her in a jail outfit in the thumbnail, wrote scum on her chest, and titled the video that she deserves jail. Gia claims she never agreed to that and was very disappointed how she was portrayed on the episode, claiming the bad parts were hyped up, which led to Caleb's fans attempting to dox her and ruin her life. Like, we did the episode, they told me to hype up my bad parts, and so, like, to make me out to be, like, the bad guy, because that's, like, kind of his shtick. And so that video ended up being really, really, really bad to the point where they were trying to dox me, they're trying to dox my husband, they're trying to dox my family. There was like people the people who watched the episode. Caleb himself. Yeah, people who so watched sorry, the, what? People who watched the episode were trying to dox you. Just his audience. And uh, one thing I want to answer, uh, ask you is about the uh, the thumbnail of your video. It's you in a jumpsuit and he the title is you should be in jail and it has scum written on your chest. Did you approve that thumbnail? You did not approve no. it. No. Because his his the people say that he all all of the thumbnails are approved by the people who appear on the channel. And you say you did not approve that thumbnail. I mean, like we took a bunch of pictures together. Or not together, but like they took a bunch of pictures after recording, but I didn't like get to see like their options for a thumbnail. An argument that has been around for a long time is whether influencers are responsible for their audience's behavior or not. Some people say no, while others think they are. I land somewhere in the middle and believe that creator isn't responsible for every little action your audience does, but when you create an atmosphere of hate where you belittle every guest that comes on your show, treat them like they are idiots, and portray them as horrible people in the title and thumbnails, your audience will see that and think it's okay for them to also treat these people the way they see Caleb treat them. I heard from several guests on the show who have all been doxxed and harassed by Caleb's fan after appearing on the show, because Caleb creates, in my opinion, episodes of Jerry Springer that is disguised as financial content so he can get higher ad rates and better sponsors. Ultimately, my personal opinion is that the show does very little to help anyone who appears on it and is designed primarily to make Caleb and his team as rich as possible, all at the expense of shitting on every person who comes on the show looking for help. In the description of this video, you'll find my entire interviews with Zeke, Gia, and the MCI informant. Give those a watch and then make up your own mind about who you believe. Ultimately, I feel Caleb's channel is a net negative to the YouTube platform as a whole, but for those who disagree, I would love to hear your opinion as to why in the comments below.